my name is Leontina Richardson, founder of Stepping Into Etiquette and your number one modern day etiquette expert. Thank you so much for dining with me today here at Devon Seafood in Chicago, one of my favorite seafood restaurants. During this video, you will learn key insights on all things dining etiquette. And before you know it, you will become that confident diner that is comfortable in any dining situation. But before we begin, on this fun-filled journey of becoming your best cuttery using self, I would like to take a moment of silence to honor the death of that wicked, non-silverware using creature that once lived so deep inside of you. Okay, I think he's dead. Let's get started. When you enter the restaurant, the first person that you will come in contact with is the host or hostess, also known as the maitre d'. When you approach the maitre d' stand, you want to make sure that you always greet them with a very friendly hello, and you should never ever barge into a restaurant and demand seating. If you are with more than one person, only one of you should approach the host stand to request seating. Everyone else should stand back to avoid blocking traffic. If you have a seating preference, please let the maitre d' know prior to being seated. But if you forget that step, no big deal. Just do not be upset if they seat you next to the kitchen. And if they seat you next to the kitchen, just politely ask them if they have another table that's available. Okay, are you ready to get started with the eating portion? Let's go. So we have finally made it to the table. First thing first, you always place your napkin on your lap as soon as you sit down. There are absolutely no exceptions to this rule. When you place your napkin on your lap, you never want to flap it in the air. You just want to discreetly unfold it under the table with the fold closest to your waist. If you are wearing dark bottoms, it is completely appropriate to ask for a black napkin, so then that way the white linen will not get on your clothes. So the napkin plays a very important role during the meal. It is so much more than just dabbing your mouth. So let's get into a few more dining etiquette rules as it relates to the napkin. When you excuse yourself, your napkin should never be placed on the table. It should always go on your chair. When you are done eating and possibly about to leave, your napkin should be placed to the left of your plate. If your napkin drops under the table, do not pick it up. Discreetly ask your server for another napkin. You should always dab your mouth with a napkin. Never ever use your napkin to wipe your entire face. Once your napkin is placed on your lap, now it's time to navigate the table. So here we have your salad fork, which is always on the outside, your dinner fork, your dinner knife, your dinner spoon, your bread plate, your water glass, and your wine glass. Here's a diagram to help you visualize things just a little bit better. This is a formal table setting with your salad fork and dinner fork to your left, as well as your napkin and bread plate. Above your plate is your dessert spoon and fork, and to your right is your dinner knife, teaspoon, and soup spoon. If there is a coffee cup on the table, it will always be on your right, and above your knife will be your glasses. This setup is very common if you go to a wedding or you go to a restaurant like Devon's because you may have a glass to your right and also a glass to your left and you have no idea which glass is yours and you do not want to be that person that's drinking out of the wrong glass. So here are a few tips that I'm going to share with you in regards to how to remember if you should drink to your right or if you should drink to your left. Step one, I want you to hold up a, the letter B and the letter D right in front of you. It almost looks like an okay. The letter D stands for your drink. So your drink will always be on the upper right side of your plate. The letter B stands for bread plate. Your bread plate will always be on the upper left side of your plate. But just do me a favor, never actually hold the B and the D up at the table, then everyone would know that you don't know what you're doing. Step number two, another friendly tip is start from the outside 
and work your way inwards towards the plate. So the salad is served first. So your salad fork is going to be on the outside. Your soup spoon is going to also be on the outside. Then you have your dinner fork and then your dinner knife. So again, start from the outside and work your way inwards towards the plate. The last tip is BMW. I know we all love BMW, so if you can remember this, then you are golden. The B stands for bread plate, the M stands for your meal, and the W stands for your water. So then that way, BMW. Got it? Let's keep going. When your table is welcomed by your server, you always want to make sure that you are polite and respectful at all times. Believe it or not, your server can make or break your dining experience. When you are placing your order, you always want to make sure that you are looking up at your server while you are talking. You never want to keep your head down while they are talking to you, even when they are reading the specials and you're not interested in the specials. Now let's move on to beverage etiquette. Normally, you should never place your order until everyone at the table is ready. However, if you're going to order a beverage, it's perfectly fine to order your beverage even if everyone at the table is not ready to place their order. If you are that person who can't figure out if you want a Sprite or a Coke, please do not hold up the rest of the table. For now, just enjoy your water. If you're anything like me and you enjoy lemons in your water, make sure that when you squeeze your lemon, your hand is cupped, you squeeze, and then you place your lemon on your bread plate. Never just squeeze without cupping your hand. As I mentioned in my book, Stop Embarrassing Yourself, I am not a wine guru. However, I think it is very important for you to know the proper way to hold a wine glass. If you are ordering white wine, you should always hold the glass by the stem. So then that way, the heat from your fingertips doesn't alter the temperature or flavor of the wine. If you are ordering red wine, you can hold it by the bowl because red wine is always served at room temperature. Here are a few more beverage etiquette tips. Tip number one, never crunch ice in your mouth while you dine with others. When you are at home, I give you permission to crunch away. Tip number two, never drink from your glass when you have food in your mouth. You don't want food to transfer from your mouth into your glass. Number three, never gulp, take sips. And lastly, women, go easy on the lipstick just to make sure your glass isn't smudged with lipstick around the rim. Have you ever been anxious to order but your server keeps walking past your table? Well, oftentimes, servers, if they see that most of the guests are still flipping through the menu, they're going to wait until all the menus are closed. So the best way to show that you are ready to place your order is to close your menu, and I promise you will be so surprised how quickly they approach your table. And always remember, if you are with a large group and plan to split the bill, now is the time to let your server know that you plan to split the bill. Do not wait until after the meal. And lastly, gentlemen, ladies should always order first. Before we jump into eating, I want to go over a few table manners that I am sure you have heard before. There are over 100 table manners, but for the sake of time, and I do not want you to fall asleep on me during this video, I'm just going to go over a few. Here are the top 10 things that you should never do at the table. Never chew with your mouth open. No one wants to see what's inside of your mouth, so close it while chewing. Never place your elbows on the table. Never speak too loudly. Never rush while you're eating, unless you are on a horrible date and you want to expedite the meal. Never slouch. You should always sit upright and close to the table. Never put your purse, keys, and phone on the table, especially not your phone. Never apply makeup at the table. Never reach across the table. This is when you should use your manners by saying, please pass the salt. Never touch or comb your hair. And lastly, never ever take a selfie with a flash if you are at a restaurant with dim light. 
I personally think you should never take a selfie during dinner, but that's just my opinion. At Devon's, they serve a delicious biscuit. However, for the purpose of this video, I will have a dinner roll that again is not from Devon's. So please do not come to Devon's and say, can I please have a dinner roll? This is just for the purpose of this video. There is an art to eating bread. Some people will cut their bread in half. That is incorrect. The proper way to eat bread is to break off a piece, take your butter knife if you have one or your dinner knife, take a little bit of butter, butter that bite-sized piece of bread, and then you will eat it. Your knife should be placed on top of the bread plate. That is the proper way to eat bread. So please do not go to a restaurant and take the entire dinner roll and put it in your mouth. You should always take a bite-sized piece and eat. If you are dining with other people, please make sure you follow these steps. Step one, pass the bread basket. If you grab the basket first, you should always offer it to the person to your left while still holding the basket and then pass it to your right. Step number two, pass around the butter dish. When you are past the butter dish, you should always use the butter spreader to take just enough butter for your roll and put it on your bread plate. Step number three, break off a piece. You should always break off a bite-sized piece with your fingers and then put the roll on your bread plate. Step number four, butter that piece of bread. When you are done buttering it, you should place your knife back onto your bread plate and always remember, once you use a utensil, it should never touch the table again. Step number five, eat your bread. And step number six, repeat. Believe it or not, there is a correct way to eat soup. The correct way is to take your spoon, start from the front of your plate, and spoon going towards the back, and then you want to bring the soup up to your mouth. You never want to start from the back and spoon towards the front. This way, any leftover soup can drip back onto the bowl before it enters your mouth. Lastly, if you choose to eat bread with your soup, that is perfectly fine. Just make sure you do not have your bread in one hand and your soup in another hand and you're eating like this. You should always either eat your bread first, take a bite, then put your bread down, and then pick up your spoon and then start the process all over again. Here are a few more etiquette tips to help you master your soup. Never crumble more than two crackers in your soup at once and always leave the wrapper under your saucer. Always sip from the side of the spoon and never blow on your soup. You should always wait until your soup has cooled off. The last dish that is served before the meal is your salad. And yes, there are rules to eating salad. The number one rule that I want you to remember is to always cut your salad before you put it in your mouth if the leaves are too big. Because if not, then you will try to put a lot of salad in your mouth and then you have to open it up as wide as possible and you run the risk of having ranch or Caesar dressing on the side of your mouth. And the worst part is, is when you're dining with someone and they don't tell you. So always remember the moral of the story is to cut the leaves. So you've been patiently waiting for your food. You had your soup, you had your salad, you had your bread, and now you are ready for your meal. But guess what happens? When your meal arrives, there's a piece of hair in your food. Now granted, that would never happen here at Devon's, but it may happen, so what should you do? So right now, I'm gonna go over a few sticky situations that may happen while you dine. If there's a strand of hair in your food, as hard as this may be, try to avoid any conflict and fuss with other restaurant employees. Discreetly gain the attention of a server and explain the issue. 
In the event that you have dropped a utensil on the ground or anything similar for that matter, do not pick it up from the ground and place it back on the table. In the event that your friend has a marinara mustache on his face, discreetly grab his attention and dab your napkin on your chin or upper lip to signal to him where the food is located. In the event that you come to the realization that your plate, glass, or utensil is unclean, simply ask your server for a new replacement. Do not use your napkin to try to wipe off the smudge or dirt marks from the item. The meal that you have been waiting for is finally here. I have ordered the steak, mashed potatoes, and asparagus. Even though I love steak sauce, I would never pre-season my food before actually trying it first. That is considered very rude to the chef. Also, when you decide to season your food, if you ask someone for the salt, they will probably pass the pepper as well because the salt and pepper should always be passed together as well as the cream and sugar. And lastly, when you are ready to dive into your food, you must decide whether or not you want to use the American style of dining or the continental, also known as the European style dining. The American style dining is commonly used by Americans and Canadians. It's when you hold your knife in your right hand and your fork in your left hand. If you are lefty, then your knife will be in your left hand and your fork would be in your right hand. As you are cutting, you will cut one piece of your meat at a time, never pre-cut all of your meats, cut one piece at a time, and then you will take your knife, place it on top of your plate, you will switch hands and proceed to eating. Do you often travel abroad? If so, I highly recommend that you learn the second style of dining, which is the continental style of dining. It is becoming more and more fashionable, so jump on the bandwagon and learn this style. First, you will take your knife in your right hand, your fork will be in your left hand, and you will start off just like you're eating American style. The difference is, is that when you bring your food up to your mouth, your knife should stay in your right hand, and your tines should be facing down, and you will bring the food up to your mouth like this, with your knife still in your right hand. When you are ready to take a little breather from eating, here's the proper way to rest your utensils. For the American style, your knife should be rested on top of your plate and your fork should be at the 11 o'clock and four o'clock position. If you are dining continental style, you should cross your fork and knife with your fork face down and on top of the knife. So we have just covered the two types of dining. Now I would like to cover how to properly hold your utensils because I see a lot of people, they do not hold their utensils a the correct way when they're cutting their food. The correct way is to make sure that your index fingers are pointed down right on top of the tines and right on top of the blade knife with your elbows close to your shoulder, just a little bit extended out, but your elbows should never be up in the air this way. And lastly, never hold your fork such as this when you are cutting. Remember, index fingers on top of the blade, thumbs on the inside, and also your index finger should be on top of the tine of your fork. And then you will proceed with cutting. Let's just say you are enjoying your meal. The food is delicious, your steak is tender and juicy, but as you are chewing, you realize that you have a piece of fat in your mouth. You really don't want to spit it out, so what should you do? Are you ready for the answer? The answer is you should remove unwanted food from your mouth with your fork. I know that sounds disgusting. You're probably wondering, okay, where should I put it? Well, you should put it back on your plate and I promise you no one will ever see it. Think about it. You are using your fork to transfer the food in and out of your mouth for the entire meal. So if there's something in your mouth, all you will have to do is put your fork back in your mouth with your tongue, move that unwanted piece of fat onto the fork, remove it out of your mouth, 
and then put that piece of fat right on the side of your plate. I promise you, no one would ever know, but I highly recommend that you try it at home first before you go out and try it while dining with others. I like mashed potatoes, but you may prefer french fries with your meal. Have you ever wondered whether or not you should use your fingers while eating your fries or if you should use your fork? The answer is, if you are eating your main entree with your fork, you should always use your fork for the side dishes as well. I can go on and on and on about dining etiquette for hours. Unfortunately, due to time, the purpose of this video is just to provide you with just enough information so that you dine with comfort and ease. So if you remember these few things, I promise that you will be that confident diner in any dining situation. Here are just a few more etiquette tips before we move on to the best part of the meal. Number one, never snap your fingers at your server or wave your hands to signal them. Always wait until your server is around, make eye contact, then smile, nod, and then hold up one finger to get their attention. Number two, if you've been invited to dinner, you should always follow the lead of your host. If they do not order an appetizer, neither should you. If they only order one glass of wine, you really shouldn't have three glasses. And lastly, if they don't order dessert, you shouldn't either. This also applies if you are dining with a group. You really shouldn't be the only person ordering dessert. Just imagine if you were ready to go home and that one person ordered dessert, now the rest of the group has to stay for an additional 15 to 20 minutes. When you are done with your entree, you should always do the following. Place your napkin on the left side of your plate if you do not plan to order dessert. If you are dining American style, your fork and knife should be at the 11 o'clock and 4 o'clock position. If you are dining continental style, the style is similar to American, except the fork tines are face down. And lastly, never ever push your plate back when you are done eating. We have made it to the end of the meal and the final dish is the dessert. And at this point, I think we both deserve a little bit of dessert, don't you think? When the dessert is served, you want to move your dessert spoon to the right side of your plate and your dessert fork to the left side of your plate. The dessert spoon is used for soft desserts such as ice cream and your dessert fork is used for hard desserts such as cake. Enjoy! Congratulations diners! You have completed the dining etiquette video. Now it's time to pay the damage. If you are the host, when the server drops off the check, you should immediately grab it. This way, your other diners will not sit and wonder who's gonna pay for the meal. Should I pay for it? So if you know you're going to pay for the meal, just grab the check immediately. Second, if you plan to split the bill, make sure this is discussed prior to the check arriving at the table. You all know you're going to split the bill, so don't wait until the last minute to try to figure out who is going to pay. And lastly, don't be cheap. Do not tip 5%. Always tip at least 15%. If you had a wonderful server, like the servers here at Devon's, then you can tip about 20, 25%. So I hope you have learned so much today and thank you for dining with us. Hi, I would like to thank you again for watching this dining etiquette video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you have a lot of information now to take back with you the next time you decide to dine with friends or family. If you enjoyed this video, I really encourage you to also download our ebook, which is the perfect guide, which will cover everything that we covered today. And lastly, if you haven't already, make sure you like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you again, coming from your number one modern day etiquette expert. Mm -hmm.